I received a question yesterday about tutorial one and that prompted me to think that perhaps it's time to update some of the information I've got about the calculation of power. Now power is of course the probability, usually expressed as a percentage, the probability of correctly rejecting a null when it is false. In other words, if there really is in the real world a difference between the control and impact location, power is the chance that in our study we will decide that they are in fact different. There is in fact a change between control and impact locations. As I've got in the study guide, there's two ways to work out power. One is direct calculation using mathematical formulae. In the old days, this was using formulae in statistical books and referring to charts. And I actually illustrate that process in tutorial one. In the last few years, however, more and more software has become available to calculate power for us. And we'll look at a couple of those options a little later. The other approach is simulation. And for simple situations, this can be done quite easily. And my tutorial includes a simulation working out power for a control impact comparison. So here is that Excel spreadsheet. I've got it loaded up and I've selected to run the macro so that it will work. And what I've got to do is fill in the boxes up here. And going back to the study guide, we can take the information here from table 2.1. And suppose I choose to look at the growth of mangrove seedlings, where mean growth uh, in control and disturbed situations is about 240, with a standard deviation of about 100. So I'm going to round those figures because uh, it being exact is not really that important. So the mean at the control is 240. And going back to the study guide here, the standard deviation is 100. Now the other box I've got to um, enter here is the impact percentage of the control. In other words, what sort of change are we looking to see or detect? So suppose I put 50% in there. That means I'm looking to detect a change of 50%, a 50% reduction in the growth rate at the impact locations. One of the difficulties of doing power analysis is we always have to come up with these what if scenarios and think, okay, what magnitude of impact am I trying to detect? Um, down here I've got how many replicates I use, so let's just go with 10, with 10 seedlings at the control and 10 seedlings at the impact, and there here is the number of simulations to do. So what I'll do is I'll just start it going while I keep talking. With only 10 replicates it runs fairly rapidly. Now what is it actually doing? What it is doing here is simulating doing a t-test or actually doing the sampling and then the t-test 2,000 times. So it generates a set of growth rates for 10 control seedlings and another 10 impact seedlings and calculates the value of the t-test and determines whether the null hypothesis would be rejected or not. In other words, by using the simulation I can work out the percentage of times the null hypothesis would be rejected and that directly is the power of the test. The important thing is that I'm using randomly generated data with the characteristics of the control site and the characteristics of the impact site. So the set of 10 observations I get for the control site, which I don't actually show here, but I store internally, that set of observations is similar to the set of results you might see if you actually went out and did this. So what we see here is that the percentage of significant tests is about 71%. So a little under three quarters of the time we would 
correctly reject the null hypothesis, we would decide that the control and impact locations were in fact different. They had different growth rates. The other 30% of the time, however, we would conclude that there was no statistically significant difference between control and impact. How does, how does that happen? Well, by chance we may get 10 rather slow growing seedlings at the control location and 10 rather fast growing seedlings at the impact location. So our control or estimate of the control will be a bit too low and our estimate of the impact will be a bit too high and that will lead to us accepting the null when in fact we should reject it. Now what you can do here, and the reason I put this together, is we can explore how changing things like the number of replicates and the difference we're trying to detect, how changing those things changes the power of the test. So what if we only do five seedlings at each location because we're feeling a bit lazy? Away we go and power now drops down to about 40%. So now we've got less than a 50% chance of actually correctly rejecting the null hypothesis. Turning that round, most of the time we did the study, we would in fact conclude that there was no impact when in fact there really is. Let's go back to 10 seedlings at each location and reduce the impact. So let's suppose that I'm looking now for just a 25% reduction in growth. So from 240 millimeters at the control site to 180 at the impact site. Done. And down here, power has dropped quite markedly to about 25%. Three out of four times that we did the study, we would say there was no change when in fact there really is a change. This is because we've got 10 seedlings at each location but we're trying to detect a smaller change and detecting a smaller change will require more replicates. So what about we take 20 and run the simulation again. Now it'll run a little bit more slowly because we're taking more replicates but we've done and power has increased up to about 45%. Now that is still quite a bit lower than the power we had for detecting a 50% reduction with 10 seedlings per site. So you can see that both of these things, the magnitude of change we're trying to pick up and the number of replicates in we sample, both of these things have a very marked effect on the power of the study. Now this simulation here is quite useful for exploring those sorts of things because we can change the magnitude of the effect we're trying to pick up and the number of replicates. In some cases people might think that even a relatively small change is important to detect. So what about even a 5% reduction is important. So let's run that situation and see what the power is. It's going to be pretty small. And there it is. Power is coming in at about 7%. So trying to pick up a 5% reduction in growth rate with 20 seedlings per site is essentially a waste of time. Either we have to greatly increase the number of replicates we're using, or think about looking at impacts in this system in a different way. Now, one last thing I'll do, what happens if I set the box here to 100 so that the mean at the control and impact locations are equal? And just to speed it up, I'll go back to 10 reps and run the simulation. So away we go, 15 done. The power of the test is about 5% and in fact that's what it should be. That is the type 1 error rate. The situation I've set up in the boxes here is that there is actually no difference between control and impact. So the null hypothesis is true. So we should accept it and that's what we do 95% of the time. 
about the nature of statistical tests is that there's always a chance of incorrectly rejecting the null and that is based on the significance level we select. So if we select 5%, 5% of the time we will incorrectly reject the null when it is in fact true. Again, that's because occasionally we will get some set of seedlings at the control location that are growing rather more rapidly and a set at the impact location that are growing rather more slowly. One last thing here is what if I set a different significance level? I'm really concerned about the environment here so I'm going to take a 10%, no let's make it a 20% significance level and I'll leave the situation so that the null is still true and back down here the type 1 error rate is now about 20% because now we are making the information we require to reject the null rather more rather looser so we're rejecting the null more often so those are the the constraints we're always operating with balancing type 1 and type 2 errors okay now I mentioned software for calculating power so if I hop over here to um, Google, the two applications that are freely available and work quite nicely are GPower 3 and in Google if I put in GPower 3 and run a search the top option is for GPower 3 Uh, and this is the website for GPower 3 and over here you've got the links to download and register and some other options. Um, GPower 3 is really quite nice and it's useful for doing some kinds of power analysis. It's however a little bit more difficult to understand and follow than the other one and this one is actually mentioned in the study guide and that's PyFace and again when I put in PyFace into Google the top link I get is Rustlint's power and sample size page and Rustlint is a statistician um, at the University of Iowa who has created this PyFace application. Now you can run it directly over the web um, but I have variable success at running Java apps directly over the web and this one doesn't want to run. Your alternative is to download it and run it on your PC and you don't need to install it, you just download it and then double click the app and it comes up with a little dialog box like this where you select the type of power analysis or the type of situation that you want to look at. So for instance um, the situation we're looking at here with control impact is basically a two sample t-test situation because we're comparing the mean of a control location to the mean of an impact location. Down here there's an option for a analysis of variance and it's very flexible and can allow you to calculate the power of just about any model but it does require a fair degree of knowledge about how to specify exactly what the model is. So let's go to the t-test, run the dialog and we'll get this little box here. Now we've got sigma, sigma, n, true difference, blah, what is going on here, what's this all about? Okay, sigma is the standard deviation. Now with PyFace I can use a slider or I can type in a value. So we're using standard deviation of 100 for the mangrove seedlings and with the checkbox here ticked it uses 100 for the standard deviation of both the control and impact locations. I've got another slider down here for sample size so let's go with 10 and again I've got an option here to set the sample sizes either equal or to vary them Alpha is the significance level so we'll leave that 0.05 and lastly up here we've got 
the difference of the means. And again, I usually prefer to type in the numbers. Now, if we go back to the situation I looked at with um, the Excel simulation, the first one I started, I put in a 50% reduction in growth. And that meant growth went from 240 millimeters to 120 millimeters, which is, of course, a reduction of 120. And as soon as I hit enter, then it's calculated out the power 0.7184, about 70%, if I express that as a percentage rather than a probability. And that's the same result we got with simulation. So there's not much difference in the two approaches. One advantage of this software is under options we can go and draw a graph. And we've got different ways in which we can draw the graph. So the usual way is to put power on the y-axis and then on the x-axis we can put a whole range of different things. And what I'm going to start with is putting the number of observations, so the sample size. And I'll start at a sample size of 2, go up to a sample size of, let's say, 50, increasing by 5. And maybe to make that even, I'll start at 5. Draw. And there's a little graph, uh, which I can make bigger. So what we've got here is power as a probability on the y-axis plotted against the sample size on the x-axis. And remember, it's the sample size of one sample here, so we have to double these numbers to get the numbers of total number of replicates. So 10 replicates at control site, 10 at impact, it'd be 20 in total. Now the shape of this curve is characteristic and it always rises fairly rapidly and then levels off. So after a certain point, increasing the sample size has very little effect on power because we're getting closer and closer to 1 or 100% power. But over the early stages of increasing replicates, changing the number of replicates makes a rather big difference. Now the actual rate of increase here and the precise shape of the curve depends on things such as the variability and the magnitude of the difference we're trying to pick up, but the overall shape is characteristic. Um, now, uh, what that shows us in this system, or what this enables us to do, is look really quite easily and work out what sort of power we need to do. Quite often, as is mentioned in the notes, um, power is considered to be adequate if it's at least 80% or 0.8. So for that, we're looking to get um, a sample size of somewhere about 13 or 14. Another way to do that is to go here and put in 0.8 and you can see we need a sample size of 11 at each location. Whoops. There. We need a sample size of 12 at each location to get power equal to about 80%. The other way of looking at the graph is to look at power versus the true difference between the means. So we'll set number of observations back to 10 and we'll start the difference between means at 0 to 240 in increments, let's say, of 20. So what I'm doing here is looking at the power of the test when the difference between the control and impact is zero, in other words, the null hypothesis is true, there is no impact, going up to the case where the difference is 240. And that means there is effectively no growth of the seedlings at the impact location. So let's have a look at that. Now we're getting a slightly different curve, a sigmoid or S-shaped type curve, where the initial increase is fairly slow, then rapid, and then it tails off. So the starting point down here, let's make this bigger again. Starting point down here where the true difference between control and impact is zero 
the probability there is 0 0.05 or 5%. That is the type 1 error rate. Uh, with this particular system and with the number of replicates and standard deviations, um, standard deviations we've got, once we get up to a reduction in growth rate of about 200 millimeters, uh, which has got to be about 80 or 90 percent, then um, the power is essentially 100 percent. So we're always going to pick that up. At intermediate effects on growth rate, intermediate reductions of growth rate, the power could be markedly less. Um, and I illustrated this with the Excel simulation. So for 10 replicates, at a 80% power, we could only pick up a reduction in growth of about 130 or 140 millimetres. So that's over 50%. So 10 replicates, um, to get a power of 80%, we can only pick up a change of over 50%. Uh, and most people would say that is inadequate, so we would need to increase the number of replicates. Okay, um, that's all I intend to look at here. Um, you can yourself go and um, download the PyFace application. It's quite easy to run for a simple t-test situation, and it can be quite illustrating to look at the curves and to see how power changes with sample size and with the difference we're trying to pick up. Of course, the other thing that affects the power, which I haven't varied in what I've been talking about here, is the standard deviation, the variability. If we go back to the study guide, you'll see that these different situations here have different amounts of variation. So the mangrove seedlings, average growth rate is about 240, standard deviation is 100, that's a little bit less than 50%. Um, and that's also the case here for the leaf miners, standard deviation is a little bit less than 50% of the actual number. Limpets on a rocky shore, their survival is slightly less variable, 12% standard deviation over a mean of about 43%, so that's roughly 25% to a third. Down at the bottom here, the mangrove snail is the most variable of all these situations here because the average number of snails is 10, standard deviation is 9, about 90% of the mean. So if we put this one into either the Excel simulation or PyFace, we'd find that with modest levels of replication we have very little power to pick up changes at all and that's because this particular animal is very variable from place to place and it's not a particularly suitable species for monitoring for environmental impacts. Okay, I hope that was useful um, and feel free to download PyFace or GPower and play around with them.